Baker is the other one who doesn't make me laugh, but he's a nice chap. <laughs> and I enjoyed that. So I enjoyed doing it. Um, I, I thought the script of the Doctor Who was rather poor, um, but they were. So, yeah, well, no, I miss, uh, no, seriously, I miss Gareth because he was Blake. And um, I thought the chemistry, uh, for want of a better word, between us was very good. And I, we discussed, didn't we, uh, when we met the other day, uh, what would have been interesting would have been if Gareth had, or the Blake character had survived at the end of the fourth series rather than my killing him. That was a very different Blake, wasn't it? That would have been an interesting relationship after that. So, uh, that would have been fun. I don't think that show would have worked without that very special relationship. Uh, and it was off as well as on stage. Um, on stage it was difficult, on, on the screen it was difficult, very difficult. You see his costume. Um, no, but it wouldn't have worked without that. And it wasn't just Paul and I, it was all of us. We got on so well together. And if we hadn't, that show wouldn't have worked at all. Who's that person I saying didn't work? I'll kill him. <laughs> Does that answer your question? Because if it doesn't, I'm afraid that's what we're going to get. <laughs> Here's another question. I have an interchangeable question for Paul and Garrett. I think I know Paul's answer, so I'll start with Garrett. Oh. <laughs> yeah. If you had total control of the Blake 7 series, whatever you said went, how would you have ended it? I'd have killed Paul. <laughs> now, if I had total control, I don't think I would have changed that much. The problem, the problem and the... The reason for Blake 7 being so popular is it was finite. Uh, and I don't think I would have changed that much. The fact that it had to end with four series, that's it. It doesn't like Doctor Who, no offense to Doctor Who fans or anything, but it doesn't go on and on, monsters, all sorts of weird things, it doesn't go on and on. It was a finite thing, two, protag two, protag oh, take a two protagonists and eventually one of them had to win. And that's what they did, and they finished it and wrapped it up, and that's fine. I don't think it, that could have been changed that much, really. You could have had uh, Avon and Serverland going off together, but then you would have had a different series. It wasn't like Seven then. So I think, I, I think Paul probably agreed. It was a finite thing. 52 episodes, two, basically two lots of people, us and the Federation, fighting. Somebody had to win at the end. And then it finished, and that was it. It can never be repeated. Well, well, we hope it will be repeated. We need the repeat fees, but... Uh, well, yeah, yeah, you're quite right. I mean, I mean, yes, it will be repeated. Money again. It never See, be remade. Jacqueline... I <laughs> know, oh, it's normal. Uh, <coughs> Jacqueline was uh, convinced that there was going to be a, not a continuation of Blake 7, obviously, because I quite agree with Gareth, um, but a spin-off from it, which was going to be called Serverland and Die, uh, <laughs> or even Avon and Die, and uh, you could guess what it was going to be. Uh, I think she was terribly disappointed when it didn't happen. Because you do get spin-offs, don't you? All sorts of. You're going to have sort of green dwarf and black dwarf and all that, aren't you? Yeah. You can leave all the rumours. Next question. Uh, this is for Gareth and Paul, because some of us are very interested. What projects do you have coming up soon? Don't forget, Patty and I are here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you'll remind us, Norman. Yes. I might do, I might do. And we've got to say what we've got coming up now uh, on the horizon. Who asked that question? I'm sorry. The lady over there. And what was the question again? Um, I know I'm fat, there's only one of me. <laughs> yeah, I hope it don't come up while he's sitting next to me. Be in Paul. Sex? <laughs> um... Iceland's pretty. Uh, um, um, I'll, I'll pass this across to Hattie. Thank you very much. <laughs> now they've said what they're going to do. You're going to be doing a, a thing, aren't you? <laughs> That's the thing, no. Uh, it's got the variety show coming yeah, up I'm tonight. Gonna, I'm going to be, doing, I'm gonna be a, a, a storyteller doing a Christmas show around my local area. Um, <laughs>
Yes, the final. Our last panel. Sadly, um, later on this evening I have to leave this lovely city that I only ever see the highlight of. <laughs> I'm sure that the, somewhere there's a downtown which I'd love to meet one day, but I can't bear to tear myself away, so I never do. Um, this is your last opportunity to ask all those questions of Sarah and I that you have never dared to ask. <laughs> and I can promise you that we may not answer. It's going to be a very quick um, <laughs> question and answer. No, we'll do our best to ask them. Um, so um, I think there's a roving mic somewhere. If someone would like to roam with that mic. There it is. And let's see what, uh, what devilish questions you can come up with. This question just kind of popped in my mind when you made your comment about only seeing the Hyatt of Chicago. I was wondering, what all tourism have you guys done in America? Which cities do you particularly like and which things in which cities Ooh. have really drawn your attention? What cities have I I've done quite, quite a few. Um, and it, I haven't done any for quite a long time, but when I was doing them, I seemed to do quite a lot. And I did some with, um, yeah, you'll be able to tell me who it was, the, the chap who had the tour was out to the big bus. No, no, it wasn't one cats. It was the BBC big, the big truck, the travelling exhibition. You did. Oh, sorry. No, it wasn't wrong. No, it wasn't wrong cats. It was somebody else then. I can't remember it who it was. It was the BBC thing. Anyway, it was a huge, great, big, long truck which had an exhibition, and two lads from university were employed to take it round all different places. And they said to me, "Would you like to fly from one city to the next?" And I said, "No, I'm quite happy actually going with the lads in the." Winnie Bago, which was great. So um, we travelled around. Well, no, it was, it was really good, and I enjoyed that. One of my favourite cities is San Francisco, and I'm, I'm, I was lucky enough to do a convention there. I've done New York, Boston, I like as well. Um, I like everywhere I've been really. Um, I love Denver. Well, I didn't get to see a lot of it, and I was hoping to get up into the mountains, but we didn't. Uh, we didn't manage that. But I've enjoyed a lot of all the cities I've been to, but. San Francisco's a particular favourite of mine because I had my honeymoon on a Doctor Who convention in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> so I suppose it has slight on. Actually, the convention was in San Jose, but um, we came over a bit earlier, straight after our wedding, and we stayed in San Francisco and had some time on our own, which was really nice. And um, I said to my husband, you will promise to bring me back here, and we did actually get back. We have been back there since, and that's one of my favourite cities of all time. For me, yes, conventions can blur a bit because certainly ones that use the same hotels, because I can do a convention at a, a Hyatt in Chicago and do a convention at a Hyatt in Miami, and they could be the same convention apart from the view out the window, really. Because um, a lot of the people there are the same people. Um, there tends to be a great interchange of the familiar faces from one place to another. So the only times I've really had an opportunity to see much of the country have been when I did the Baker Baker tour. Uh, any of you were privileged enough to see um, the irresistible force and the immovable object <laughs> <laughs> on tour together. Um, which, like you, um, I had the opportunity of going by air and I said, no, I'll, I'll travel with the guys in the Winnebago. Uh, <laughs> and I actually drove myself. I drove the truck because I said I wanted to have a go. I didn't stay in the Winnie Bingham, I think I would just put uh, this yeah, on the top and put this right. <laughs> <laughs> just travelled, what is that? And I stayed in the hotel and I got, oh dear, these room, rumours that start at these conventions, I tell you, you have to be so careful what you say. Sorry. And I drove from, I don't get the places right, Atlanta to, oh, what's the place where the country music? Nashville. Nashville. From Atlanta to Nashville, not very far. It was a day's drive, and I enjoyed that. Through, did I go through Santa Fe or somewhere? No, uh, Tallahassee, Chattanooga, yeah. Chattanooga. My, my American geography is very poor. But, but we stopped and saw the Chattanooga Choo Choo. And as, as soon as you do things like that, you begin to feel some sort of relationship with the country you're in. There's somebody waving at me there. Hello, oh, it's, it's Mr. Siegel. Phil the cigar, are you leaving us? Just waving. <laughs> Not waving, but drowning. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Um, lost my train of thought now, yes. You suddenly begin to feel you belong in the country. Because basically, in a hotel, you could be anywhere. And most of my trips to Chicago, I haven't had much opportunity to 
go and see Chicago. I have never, to my knowledge, been downtown in Chicago. I think there may have been once when I had about an hour at one of the early conventions. But usually I get in here and you know, take a deep breath, launch into a convention and go home again because I have to get back to my family. The, the cities I remember with affection are the ones like you where I've had a bit of time. And Denver is one of those. I love Denver. I also loved Phoenix. I, had a, I did a convention in Phoenix, Arizona, which introduced me to the joys of Corona beer. <laughs> and tequila in large quantities. <laughs> and I, I have very strong but blurred memories of a very pleasant, it was, the weather was so beautiful uh, when I was there. And it was just everything you expect America to be. And people were you know, friendly. And I, I got out and walked around and had a nice time there. I had a day off in Phoenix, so that was nice. Like you, I'm very fond of um, the California coast, from San Francisco down through Monterey and all down there places I've spent some time in. Um, Boston also is very nice. But, and there are little pockets of places I've been to. I, at Seattle, I had a nice time in Seattle when I was there. And uh, I got to go and see all the Twin Peaks. Was it when I was in Seattle or when I was in Washington? Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> um, Washington State. Where was Twin Peaks filmed? Was it? So it was up there, yeah. And I, I got to go to Snoqualmie and all those places, which were lovely, because I was a great Twin Peaks fan. But, I mean, the, the, this isn't so much a com country, it's a continent, there's everything here. Yeah. You can go from one side to another, and it's like going from London to Peking. Yeah. And back again, I mean, the, the, the distances involved, it, it's a vast landmass with lots of wonderful countryside, uh, fascinating towns and places and people. And I just wish I had the time to explore it. But I'm, I'm hoping to have a bit of a chance next year because uh, I'm bringing my entire family across next May. It's um, the first time my girls have been on an aeroplane, never mind abroad. And um, we're going to go on the Doctor Who cruise, which um, goes out of Miami around the Caribbean and back again. And then we're going to go have a few days in Disney, <laughs> which we're looking forward to. Um, if I had my family with me, I'd stay much longer. Obviously, with the wife and four children, bringing them across to this convention would somewhat uh, destroy the point of doing it. <laughs> Janet Fielding and I did um, a few conventions together, and we did one in Hartford, Connecticut. Um, I think it was the same tour as I mentioned before. I think it was Lion, was it Lionheart? Was it Sorry, yes. I think it was one of those. And uh, we had a week to kill before we had to do um, a convention at Springfield, Massachusetts, the following weekend. And uh, I think it was... Bob, or the chap who was running it, said to me, look, you can have the hire car for the, for the week, go off, you can go every night as long as you're in Springfield by Friday night. And he had hired the most enormous Oldsmobile thing. It was, where, it was the size of where I used to live on wheels, basically, and it was gold metallic. And Janet, who was similar size to myself, had not got her driving license with her, and I happened to have my driving license, so I had to do all the driving. And Janet said, I look like one of those little mascots people hang on their rear view mirror. I just had to fall into the driver's seat. I had this enormous great big steering wheel and this bonnet which disappeared into the horizon. And we decided on a, a rash moment to go to Martha's Vineyard, which was great fun. But the day we chose to cross on the ferry, it was pouring with rain, the winds were howling. It was practically just us on this thing. And I had to get this gold metallic Oldsmobile thing on this ferry without scratching it and I was trying to get it between the girders and it was just a nightmare. But we had a wonderful time, we were so lucky to be able to do that. It's things like that I remember most. Yeah. Um, what ambitions do you both have in the acting field? <laughs> <laughs> John, John, please can you use the We'll get Gary Lockwood to put a good word in for you. Yeah, he looks like you're galloping about on horses, which I love, and saying the odd line here and there, firing guns, and you know, just, no sort of big, deep thing. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. 